this. Okay. So um, the um, uh, the translation goes as, "Kyoki yeh atma achhe, yani ki jo kaate nahi ja sakti, adaye hai jo ki jalai nahi ja sakti, akled jo ki gili nahi ho sakti, aur asosh jo ki sukhai nahi ja sakti." यह नित्य सर्वगत स्थानों या स्थिर अचल और सनातन है। The commentary goes as यह तो स्पष्ट ही है कि जिस वस्तु का नाश प्रकृति की विनाशकारी शक्तियां अथवा मानव निर्मित साधनों एवं शास्त्रार्थों के द्वारा संभव नहीं संभव नहीं है, उसे नित्य होना चाहिए। इस श्लोक की दूसरी पंक्ति में आत्मा के अनेक विशेषण बताए गए हैं जो शीधरावत चाहे जहां उठाकर निष्प्रयोजन ही प्रयोग में नहीं लाए गए हैं विचारों की एक श्रृंखला के स्वरूप में प्रत्येक शब्द को चुनकर प्रयोग किया गया है प्रथम पंक्ति में वर्णित जो अविनाशी तत्व है उसको नित्य होना चाहिए जो नित्य वस्तु है वह निश्चित ही सर्वगत भी होगी सर्वगत इस छोटे से शब्द का अर्थ व्यापक और तात्पर्य गंभीर है कोई भी वस्तु ऐसी शेष नहीं रह सकती जो सर्वगत तत्व के द्वारा व्याप्त ना हो नित्य आत्मा सर्वगत है तो उसका कोई आकार विशेष भी नहीं हो सकता क्योंकि आकार केवल परिचिन्न वस्तु का होता है जिसकी सीमा के बाहर उससे भिन्न अन्य कोई वस्तु रहती है जैसे हाथ पैर इत्यादि अवयव का आकार होता है क्योंकि इनके क्योंकि इनके बाहर आसपास आकाश तत्व है अतः परिचिन्न सर्वगत आत्मा का कोई आकार नहीं है क्योंकि उसको परिचिन्न करने वाली कोई अन्य वस्तु है ही नहीं इस प्रकार नित्य सर्वगत वस्तुओं का स्थिर और अचल होना स्वाभाविक है उसमें चलनादि क्रिया संभव नहीं गति केवल उस व्यक्ति वस्तु के लिए है जो किसी काल और देश विशेष में रहती है तब उसका स्थानांतरण किया जा सकता है आत्मा का किसी काल अथवा देश में अभाव नहीं है तो उसमें गति होने का प्रश्न ही नहीं उठता मैं स्वयं में ही घूम फिर नहीं सकता यहां स्थिर और चल शब्दों दोनों शब्दों का एक साथ प्रयोग व्यर्थ प्रतीत हो रहा है क्योंकि कुछ क्योंकि वे कुछ समानार्थी हैं परंतु स्थिर शब्द से अभिप्राय नीचे मूल स्थिरता से है जैसे पेड़ एक जगह स्थिर होते हैं परंतु उनकी वृद्धि ऊपर की ओर होती है यहां अचल रहकर उर्ध गति का भी निषेध किया गया है अनंत स्वरूप आत्मा स्थिर और अचल है अर्थात उसमें किसी प्रकार का भी चलन क्रिया नहीं है प्राचीन प्राचीन पुरातन वस्तु को सनातन कहते हैं इस सनातन शब्द के दो अर्थ हैं एक वाचार्य शाब्दिक और दूसरा लाक्षार्थ उसका सरल वाचार्थ यह है कि आत्मा कोई नई वस्तु नहीं है यह प्राचीन है लाक्षार्थ के अनुसार इसका तात्पर्य है कि आत्मा काल और देश से मर्यादित परिचिन्न नहीं है किसी भी देश में किसी भी काल में क्योंकि कोई भी व्यक्ति आत्म साक्षात्कार से पूर्णत्व प्राप्त करता है तो यह साक्षात्कार एक ही होगा भिन्न भिन्न नहीं आगे भगवान कहते हैं I think it's, it's, it's quite deep um, and the explanation is again quite deep. So this is basically laying down the fundamentals of um, self-realization, which is the Sakshatkar, Atma Sakshatkar, he called it. So um, basically what happens is when you follow the eightfold yoga and then, um, you know, yogas are there, the meditation is there and then the, the, the ultimate aim of it is to do the self-realization. And um, by the self-realization means is actually to realize who we are, which is the Atma. Now, the explanation which we are reading now is actually the intellectual knowledge of what soul is about and how do you experience it, in short. So, they are, I mean, in this particular shloka, it is actually explained the um, um, the vastness of the soul itself, that how 
big it is. And and when you actually even experience your own self, so I'm not sure if any of you do the meditation. So the purpose of the meditation is to detach from your physical body, mind, and then actually experience the soul, the vastness of the soul. And one of the important things they have said here is, is that um, you have a form. So a body have a form. And the body f- actually have a form is because outside the body is space, the space element. And that is the element which actually defines what the form is going to be. Whereas in the case of the soul, it is actually a part of the space. Space resides within the soul. And, and the other aspect they said is this soul was always there. It never changed as, as is shown in the picture. Actually, if you see other things, they may change, but you know, the soul has been has been there from the ages. That's why one says that, you know, I was there, I'm Prach, I'm Prachin. It's it was I think Mother Shlok also he said that it was never the case that I never existed and it it was never the case I will never you know or I will cease to exist. So there is something which is Sashwat, which is the real us, which always persisted, you know, over the years, over the ages, and it cannot be just defined because it it, it cannot be defined by the the school elements, you know, it, it is vast. And ultimately, you know, the goal of spirituality, the goal of meditation, and of course, Gita is pointing towards, is to understand our reality, who we are. And then the more you focus upon your real core, which is the soul, the more you will find alignment with the nature, with the universe, with everything everything else, actually. If you, if I just talk on a more... Um, day-to-day language you know we make so much demarcations in short like um like uh, talk about races right so there are various races we make different demarcations even within india then you have demarcations north south east west all these demarcations if you look at it um they're pretty much you know starting from geography and then they become political and you know it's the human man-made demarcations um, of course, pretty much inside, they all are same in terms of the anatomy, the blood and the bones and everything. And you look much more deeper, you know, the, the soul wise, we, we all fundamentally are the same. Now, then the moment you start looking much more deeper, then you become more unified, then, then forget the human race completely, the other animals, the other plants and everything. You see the, exactly the same, you know, Chaitanya Surup everywhere. You know, so so the the lines of the demarcation starts, you know, cleaning off, and then you know everywhere you see is the soul. As I think in in Buddhism, eventually they focus a lot that you know, I, Buddha in me, see Buddha in you, Buddha in me greets the Buddha in you. So that sort of is the core purpose, very very core and deep shlok. Um, but eventually, this is what you know religion and gita teaches us that um you know see that goodness see that soul within us explore that and see that soul in everyone else because this is the element which is long lasting which was always there even when our body was there or not which will always will persist whether our body will be there or not and that is that is the core um core concept um, quite deep. Anyone else would like to add on to uh, to it? Desh Bhai, do you have any insights? No, Nivid Bhai, you have explained it very well. Particularly the example you've given regarding, you know, what you see in plant and other thing, if you clear the demarcation, uh, you will see the things very clearly, like it's all same thing, basically. Exactly. So, in Prabhuji, do you want to add on something? Thank you, Gitesh Bhai. Do you have any insights too? It's, it's, it's very clear, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. So, I think last time I've, we discussed the example about, um, I think this is probably what I can relate here is, uh, you know, in China, it's noodle, in, in mm-hmm. it's, it's pizza, 
in maybe India or Pakistan, it may be bread or roti. And, you know, the forms are different. But if you look at the core, that's the wheat, the anna. Mm. And that's, that, that, that doesn't change. And, and actually, sorry, one thing I missed to say here is also the, the location. The soul is, you know, not binded to one location as in exactly the example I was giving. So being different location, different places, the form of the, the of uh, sorry, the form of the anna changes. Someone, you know, China is noodle and India is roti, for example. But the core, the soul of it remains the same. And that's what Bhavan is saying as well, that, you know, uh, I'm timeless and I'm, you know, I'm not binded to, con uh, I'm as in the soul is not binded to a, a coordinate. It can never be. It is always persisting and it doesn't matter. The other thing, important thing they said is anywhere in the world when someone do the self-realization and, and under any sect and under any religion, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, X, Y, Z, when they realize themselves, irrespective of where they are, they will have exactly the same feeling. They will actually, re the, the self-realization of the soul will be exactly the same, irrespective of the time, the location, you know, where we, because, and the reason being is, you know, uh, it, it's, it's like this. I went to see waterfall. I had a different experience. I went to see a volcano. I had a different experience. Yeah, because they're all external elements and they have all different properties. But when I went to see, you know, when I went to experience my own soul, irrespective of where physically I am, the experience will always be the same. That's that that's very key of it because um, it's the time, location, um, which does not bind the soul eventually. So, so that was one thing. Okay, um, let's move on to verse 25. Okay, uh, so I am a chintio, I am a vicario, I am uchete. Thus, ma deum, we did vinum na nuschu. Na no so shitam arhasi. The soul is spoken of as invisible, inconvincible, and unchangeable. Knowing this, you should not grieve for the body. Both of you. Um, the translation goes as Yeha Atma Avyakt Achintan. और अविकारी कहा गया है इसीलिए इसको इस प्रकार जानकर तुमको शोक करना उचित नहीं है आत्मा के स्वरूप को भगवान यहां और अधिक स्पष्ट करते हैं यहां प्रयुक्त शब्दों के द्वारा सत्य का निर्देश युक्तिपूर्वक किया गया है अव्यक्त पंच महाभूतों में से जो सबसे अधिक स्थूल है जैसे पृथ्वी उसका पांच ज्ञान इंद्रियों से उस, उसका ज्ञान पांचों ज्ञान इंद्रियों के द्वारा होता है जैसे परंतु जैसे जैसे सूक्ष्मतर तत्व तक हम पहुंचते हैं वैसे यह ज्ञात होता है कि उसका ज्ञान पांचों प्रकार से नहीं होता जल में गंध नहीं है अग्नि में रस नहीं है तो वायु में रूप नहीं है इस प्रकार आकाश सूक्ष्मतम होने से दृष्टि गोचर नहीं होता स्वभावता जो आकाश का भी कारण है उसका ज्ञान किसी भी इंद्रिय के द्वारा नहीं किया जा सकता अतः हमें स्वीकार करना पड़ेगा कि वह अव्यक्त है इंद्री गोचर वस्तु व्यक्त कही जाती है अतः जो इंद्रियों से परे है वह अव्यक्त है यद्यपि मैं इस यद्यपि मैं किसी वृक्ष के बीच में वृक्ष को देख सुन सकता हूं और ना उसका स्वाद स्पर्श या गंध को ज्ञात कर सकता हूं तथापि मैं जानता हूं कि यही बीज वृक्ष का कारण है इस स्थिति में कहा जाएगा कि बीज में वृक्ष अव्यक्त अवस्था में है इस प्रकार आत्मा को अव्यक्त कहने का तात्पर्य यह है कि वह इंद्रियों के जान इंद्रियों के द्वारा जानने योग विषय नहीं है उपनिषदों में विस्तार पूर्वक बताया गया है कि आत्मा सबकी दृष्टा होने से दृश्य विषय नहीं बन सकती सेकेंड इज अचिंतन आत्मा इंद्रियों का विषय नहीं है उसी प्रकार यहां वह अचि अचिंतन है 
कहकर यह दर्शाते हैं कि मन और बुद्धि के द्वारा हम आत्मा का मनन और चिंतन नहीं कर सकते जैसे अन्य विषयों का विचार संभव है इसका कारण यह है कि मन और बुद्धि दोनों ही स्वयं जड़ है परंतु इस चैतन्य आत्मा के प्रकाश से चेतन होकर वे अन्य विषयों को ग्रहण करते हैं अब अपने ही मूल स्वरूप दृष्टा को वे किस प्रकार विषय रूप में जान सकेंगे दूरदर्शी यंत्रों से देखने वाला व्यक्ति व्यक्ति सॉरी सॉरी फॉर दैट जिसको कॉल सॉरी आल जिसको अगेन इसका कारण यह है कि मन और बुद्धि दोनों स्वयं जड़ है परंतु इस चैतन्य आत्मा के प्रकाश से चैतन होकर वह अन्य विषयों को ग्रहण करते हैं अब अपने ही मूल स्वरूप दृष्टा को Jens, apologies for that. Just a bit of a disruption. I'm going to read this again. The chinta part. Atma indriyo ka vishe nahi hai. Usi prakar yeh achintan ne keh kar yeh darshate hain ki man aur buddhi ke dwara ham atma ka manan aur chintan nahi kar sakte. Jaise anne vishyo ka vichar sambhav hai. Iska karan yeh hai ki man aur buddhi dono swam jad hai. Parantu is chetan ne atma ke prakar se चैतन होकर वे अन्य विषयों को ग्रहण करते हैं अब अपने ही मूल स्वरूप दृष्टा को वो किस प्रकार विषय के रूप में जान सकेंगे दूरदर्शी यंत्र से देखने वाला व्यक्ति स्वयं को नहीं देख सकता क्योंकि एक ही व्यक्ति स्वयं दृष्टा और दृश्य दोनों नहीं हो सकते यह अचिंतन्य शब्द का तात्पर्य है अतः अव्यक्त और अचेतन अचिंत शब्द से आत्मा को अभाव रूप नहीं समझ लेना चाहिए अविकारी नेक्स्ट इज अविकारी अव्यय से युक्त साकार पदार्थ परिचिन्ह और विकारी होता है निर्व्यम आत्मा में किसी प्रकार का विकार संभव नहीं है इस प्रकार श्री श्री कृष्ण अर्जुन को उपदेश देते हैं कि आत्मा को उसके शुद्ध स्वरूप आत्मा को उसके शुद्ध स्वरूप को पहचान कर शोक करना त्याग देना चाहिए ज्ञान पुरुष अपने को ना मारने वाला समझता है और ना ही मरने वाला समझता है भौतिकवादी विचार को के मत को स्वीकार कर के यह मान भी लें कि आत्मा नित्य नहीं है तब भी भगवान कहते हैं जो कि नेक्स्ट श्लोक में कहेंगे सो so, um, i think um, so in, in short uh, they are saying there are three properties of soul avyakt achitanya uh, and avikari to avyakt is primarily which you cannot express because it's it doesn't have a physical form and um, and on a avyakt when i was reading it there is only one thing was coming to my mind that you know um in in general like i mean now of course we are a bit mature in our journey and we understanding the core of it in general you know people ask the question you know you believe in god have you seen it right i think i'm going to relate this here like okay you you talking about atma have you seen it well no because these elements are actually the elements as described in the scriptures which which actually are avyakt you know as they have given example right it is a seed you know in the seed there is going to be a tree but it's not visible and that's exactly what atma is even the god is so actually in short um if you remember previously we discussed so atma is our our own conscious and then parmatma is parmatma as we say which is the god right so and then ultimately the purpose of the um spirituality and the ultimate aim of the hinduism the moksha is atma ka parmatma samilan so our own consciousness and then there is this 
super consciousness and always remember that you know our own independent consciousness they all are connected with this super or the paramatma consciousness or super consciousness so it's a big viral uh, a neural computer network that's how people are connected you know telepathy and all that so we all are sort of well connected uh, our own all atmas they are actually connected the paramatma um, and the more you do these sort of things you know the reading of the gita the puja the meditation the more the channel becomes clear and then you perceive more bliss from paramatma in short and what happens is when we don't do all this then due to our daily life routine like th- that channel becomes a bit faded away you know and you feel disconnected and at times you completely feel disconnected like arjuna was then by giving the the knowledge um, you know paramatma has given the blessing and then he feel then connected back on so coming back to the avik part that uh, it is so it's not the uh, it's not the subject for atma to be defined it is not because it's inside is like same example where there is a bulb <clears throat> and there is electricity you know when you turn on the light then you see the things which are actually visible by the light which are outside but you don't see electricity but that doesn't mean the electricity doesn't exist electricity is there but electricity is not a subject and as they said electricity is not the subject which subject to light you cannot see electricity by the light that doesn't mean that doesn't exist that's exactly what uh, it says there that if you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist because you can only see which is known to you we have five again another important thing to say is we have the five indriyas right so we have um ear eye hand um the jeeb the tongue uh, and skin so these are, i mean and and if we just remember back our our own human architecture right so from five indriyas from five senses you you explore you experience things and from that sensory perceptions you get you know those experiences in your mind and then from the mind those experiences goes to buddhi to make a decision upon now us you can only see what what these five indriyas can perceive i mean to say you can only experience i mean not see you can you can only experience something which only these five indriyas can uh, are limited upon but beyond the scope of them you cannot and that's exactly what they're saying that atma is something which is beyond the scope of indriyas that's why because you cannot see it. i mean in uh, indriya one of the indriyas you can only see or you can hear you can touch or smell but atma is beyond the scope of indriyas it's like electricity when i turn on the electricity i can see whatever i can see which is the scope of the light you know i mean you can always argue like you see whatever you see because there are even microbes in the room but they are not subject they are not they are outside the scope of the light you know you can't see them with the naked eye because they are outside the scope of my naked eye i have to use microscope to see them and that's exactly what they're saying that that atma the experience of the atma is outside the scope of our five indriyas that's why we cannot see them or we cannot hear or feel them but they persist and they have persisted over the time so that is avyakta and then they talked about achinta um achinta which means that um you cannot actually perceive much about it um which means it's again um there is is not a subject you can think about so you know mostly again you know uh, from your indriyas you um perceive a knowledge or any experience it's a subject which you think about for example i went out and i like i like a car and i loved it and then i'm thinking about it i have to buy it i have to buy it and all now that's a subject but atma is not a subject and because it's not a subject and because the indriyas cannot think or read or experience that subject it's achita it's achinta if there is a subject if there is a car my indriya can see them i can experience that you know i can try that car out i can feel the greatness of the car how cool it is that goes to my mind and then my buddhi now the architecture stays the same but 
atma is something which enlightens all this architecture of indriya man and buddhi so atma is something which is actually giving energy is that electricity that you know giving the energy to the cpu to, to do the job to the computer to do the job so that's why it's achintan because it's not a subject to be discussed about then avikari last word so avikari is like um in short if it's not a subject it doesn't change it stays the same how it was the start till the end that's why it persisted over and over the years so um so that's that's pretty much it and i think the next slog they will they will talk more about um it uh, but at the end lord shri krishna says when you understand what atma is um it, then there is no purpose of being you know grievous about the fact that you are going to kill someone because atma is not going to kill someone either it's going to get killed it's only the form which was known to your indriyas they will get destroyed and they will take rebirth again which is the human body but you know your real immortal um soul will stay the same so someone who have this intellectual knowledge they you know they have no purpose of grief as we said before like we came into this world because of ignorance ignorance is what causes pain trouble and grief knowledge is something that actually opens the eyes and that actually relinquish all the grief and that's the purpose of the knowledge by the way and here lord shri krishna also advises uh, because he's trying to you know make his friend arjuna to get back to the track to to fight and in the battlefield and here he is explaining the core concepts of um you know who you actually are why you're grieving for you're grieving for something which is actually not required whatever is subject to you whatever you're seeing from your indriyas is just you know a temporary aspect but you know you're ignoring the immortal aspect of yourself and your other side they all are atma you know so so have a knowledge and then get back to the fight in short quite quite a deep shlok um may i request uh, you guys if you have any any insights to it gitesh bhai do you want to add upon something no no need why i think bit complex to understand all those invisible inconceivable and unchangeable but i think uh, you tried best to explain us it's still not 100% like clear those terms actually yes i think that the the terms may be a little trickier because um, because basically it seems like all are pointing to all three things are pointing to one thing only which is like soul you can't see it it's not a subject so you can't feel it so basically seeing it feeling it and it's not going to modify you can't modify it so if you can't see it you can't modify it if you can't see it you can't feel it so yes all three things looks like just you know related to each other yeah so i mean as you see here invincible inconceivable and unchangeable unchangeable mm. so soul the property of the soul as they say is, is first is uh, invincible uh, invincible uh, invisible sorry invisible uh, invisible so it's not um, which is a vyakt you know which is uh, yeah. which and the, and we expect quite went in the deep there why is invisible and i think it's in general knowledge is important you know because your kids may ask this right and they get inquisitive about that you know uh, okay have you seen god hmm. why are we praying the god yeah so i think that's where this knowledge comes in that why it's invisible because it's invisible because you know uh, your indriyas your your um, senses are subject to seeing and doing things which are only known to them but the element which is not known to them that will become invisible that does not mean and by the way this is this is the law of the nature there are hundreds of things hundreds of photo if you start really taking the right photographs you will see hundreds of waves hundreds of things <clears throat> microbes this and that they all are invisible but they are all in action they yeah, all exist yeah so so definitely but yes i agree that it is uh, fairly fairly complex and quite deep actually we are taking a deep dive mm. so very good um sunil ji you want to add on something or shall we progress um uh 
um actually uh it's it's uh Sri Krishna is pointing here that uh that uh if you see somebody you you may think as uh, many of us you may think that he is or she is that person but in that person resides the soul and that is the difficulty to understand uh, and uh, what is soul and what is body and so it's the beginning to get this topic it's, it's a bit difficult so if you go through all the uh, some of the verses then it will become more uh, clear uh, because usually normally if you see somebody you think oh that is he or she but in the body is a soul and the soul stays forever never dies and it was there and it will be there and the body is yeah they will be the body will change that's what i as a summary correct correct that's 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 so so the never changing aspect and i mean we, we try to understand what soul is about here and how the properties of it um so that we make a differentiation what is a subject and what is a soul and as you said well said about the properties and the summary of it so thank you very much let's take one more we have 15 minutes so let's take verse six okay uh Sunil Prabhuji. yes prabhu atha chainam nitya jatam nityam va manasya mrityam tathapi tvam maha baho naivam so chitam arhasi thank you prabhuji um Gideesh, bhai. Yeah. if however you think that the self is subject to constant birth and death O oh, mighty armed Arjun, even then you should not grieve like this. So the, uh, the translation goes as, Or yadi tum atma ko nitya janmane or nitya marne wala mano, to bhi he mahabaho, yani Arjun, is prakar shok karna tumhare le uchit nahi hai. I see it is actually he is contradicting his own statement, but let's, let's see more about it. So 26, 27, um, in those shlokas, Bhagavan Shri Krishna ne bhautik vadi vicharko ka drashtikon keval tark ke liye prastut kiya hai. Of course, he's contradicting, but just for a reason actually. Ismat ke anusar keval prateksh praman hi gyan ka sadhan hai. Arthat, indriyo ko jo gyat hai, keval vahi sat hai. Is prakar manne par उन्हें यह स्वीकार करना पड़ता है कि जीवन असंख्य जन्म और मृत्यु की एक धारा का आ, की एक धारा का प्रवाह है वस्तुएं निरंतर उत्पन्न और नष्ट होती हैं और उसके मत के अनुसार यही जीवन है श्री कृष्ण कहते हैं कि यदि जन्म मृत्यु का यह निरंतर प्रवाह ही जीवन है तब भी हे शक्तिशाली अर्जुन Tumko shok nahi karna chahiye kyoki. Okay, so there's, I mean, there's really no much to it. All they're mm. saying is, is, till now they said that like, because you cannot see and you cannot experience soul, right? Because it's not a matter of the, it's not a matter of our senses. Even for a second you consider that the soul can be perishable, it can be killed and all, then still you should not, you know, um, you should not grieve about killing someone. That is actually in next sloka. So I think we should take the next sloka. I don't think there is much to talk about here. Yeah. Has just con- just for the argument's sake, I would say. Actually, he have conflicted his own statement where he's saying soul is definitely not a subject to be you know, known from our own senses. But let's consider for a minute. You know, Just for argument's sake is the right word, actually. So let's say, and then let's do the shloka 27 and try and understand 
what uh, what they are saying why um i mean if you even consider that the soul is something which is perishable then um then why you should not still grieve about uh so in prabhuji you want to take this this last one please from the sure. ja tasya hi dhruvo mrichur dhruvam janma mrit mritasya cha tasmat apihariya apih apihariya arthe na tvam sochitim sochitum arhasi hari bol that is certain for one who has been born and rebirth is inevitable for one who has died therefore you should not lament over the inevitable thank you dr shri so the comment uh, the translation goes as janne wale ki mrityu nishchit hai aur marne wale ka janm nishchit hai isliye jo atal hai aparihar hai उसके विषय में तुमको शोक नहीं करना चाहिए भौतिकवादी नास्तिक लोगों का मत है कि बिना किसी पूर्वापर कारण के वस्तुएं उत्पन्न नहीं होती आस्तिक लोग देह से भिन्न जीव का अस्तित्व स्वीकार करते हुए कहते हैं कि एक ही जीव विकास की दृष्टि से अनेक शरीर धारण करता है जिससे वह इस दृश्य जगत के पीछे जो परम सत्य है उसको पहचान सके दोनों ही प्रकार के विचारों में एक सामान्य बात यह है कि दोनों ही यह मानते हैं कि जीवन जीवन मृत्यु की एक श्रृंखला है इस प्रकार जीवन के स्वरूप को समझ लेने पर निरंतर होने वाले जन्म और मृत्यु पर किसी विवेकी पुरुष को शोक नहीं करना चाहिए गर्मियों के दिनों में सूर्य के प्रखर ताप में बाहर खड़े होकर यदि कोई सूर्य के ताप और चमक की शिकायत करें तो वास्तव में यह मूर्ता का लक्षण है इसी प्रकार यदि जीवन को प्राप्त कर उसके परिवर्तनशील स्वभाव की कोई शिकायत करता है तो वह एक अक्षम्य मूर्ता है उपयुक्त कारण से शोक करने शोक करना अपने अज्ञान का ही परिचय है श्री कृष्ण का जीवन तो आनंद और उत्साह का संदेश देता है उनका जीवन संदेश है कि रुदन अज्ञान का लक्षण है और हंसना बुद्धिमता का हंसते रहो इन दो शब्दों में श्री कृष्ण का उपदेश है श्री कृष्ण हंसते रहो इन दो शब्दों में श्री कृष्ण के उपदेश को बताया जा सकता है इस कारण जब वह अपने मित्र को शोकाकुल देखते हैं तो उसकी शोक और मोह से रक्षा करने के लिए और इस प्रकार अपने जीवन के लक्ष्य को प्राप्त करने के लिए वे तत्पर हो जाते हैं अब आगे हम दश आगे के दश लोग सामान्य मनुष्य के दशकों को बताते हैं भगवान शंकराचार्य अपने भाष्य में लिखते हैं कि कार्य कारण के संबंध से युक्त वस्तुओं के लिए शोक करना उचित नहीं है क्योंकि अभी मैं तो व्हाट आई अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट इवन दो यू कंसीडर वो आगे मैं दैट यू नो आत्मा इज समिंग विच विल बी इट्स लाइक नित्य विच इज कनेक्ट perish and then gonna rebirth again so again there is no concept there is you should you should have this knowledge that something which dies it takes birth again as shown in the picture so um dr krishna says here you know um the cycle of the life still persists so even for argument sake even though that's not true even for argument sake you think that okay uh, you, you something is going to die but then it's a cycle of life it's going to take a rebirth again you know so that that's that sort of is important now um the what he's saying is as intellectual we should not um you know argue or complain about this cycle of life it is it is it is going to be there it is there it has been there for for um for a while and i think the other aspect which he mentioned his message is quite clear that um laughter actually um is very important be happy and live your life because i think it's clearly mentioned here that the grief 
or depression is actually a sign of ignorance in short. They clearly say that, you know, the, the smart people, they smile. They have a good sense of humor. It's actually in, in management terms as well, it is considered as having a good sense of humor is, a, is actually a reflection of intelligence. The, the sharper the sense of humor, the more intelligent the person is. And um, Rudan, the grief is actually a sign of uh, ignorance. And I think in general, you will see the people who are generally happy, you know, it doesn't need to have a lot of money and all of that. They actually are very satisfied, intellectuals. The, and in short, if you look, look at it, right, this is what Gita teaches us to live a life as Sat Chit Anand Sarup. Means Sat Chit Anand Sarup. Means Sat is which is which is the real. Chit is your man. And Anand Sarup means in the pleasure. Apne man ko jo hai ek sat mein sthapit karo jo ki always pervading hai. Toh hum log agar apni atma ki taraf dhyan dete hai. And, and this is where even the purpose of the meditation is when you you can your body can have sufferings your mind can have issues traumas or whatever but your soul is not subject to any of them and what we are focusing here and, and that's by the way uh, if any of you have experienced meditation that's exactly what meditation does it actually abstracts you it, it, dis- it detaches you from your um, bodily engagements uh, it can even reduce the pain um, then also it reduces, you know, the, any any traumas or any mental issues you may be facing through. And then you see the light, the, the soul part, which we call it, which is the Satchidan and Suru. And it's all pleasure. And this is the beauty of Hinduism, actually. The, Hinduism doesn't teach us that, you know, you have to do something, something throughout your life and you'll die and you'll actually gain the pleasure in, in heaven. The heaven and hell is actually here in our life, here, right here, what we live and what we make out of it. So realizing that our, our true nature, actually, that's the right word. So realizing our true nature, which is being happy and contented, is actually our true nature. This is Atma, Satchidana and Swarup. And that's what Prabhu is um, guiding us to live that sort of life. You, know, you are my child. And as we were talking about that, Atma is connected to Paramatma. There is always a linkage. You know, by doing these exercises, you get to know what the reality is. And the more you are connected there, um, the more it becomes clear. And he wants you to, it's like, is that Lord Krishna is like a father? Any father would like his, you know, children to be happy. You know, have children, have lots of fun. Don't worry about it. You know, I'll take care of everything. I'll take care of the problem. And that's exactly what they are directing us that, you know, do not worry, first of all. Live your life happily. And and th- this all drama in your life, in short, or it's actually a sign of ignorance. And the knowledge is purely, you know, bliss. Now, it's very easy to say, by the way, especially when you, if you're married, then, you know, uh, it's, it's where it becomes very challenging because the other part of, you know, always have issues. They, they, they are emotional at times. Um, and then it creates a lot of drama around the life, but it happens, the part of life with the keys. And just I will reflect back to when we started Sankhya, where there was the, the idea of spirituality is to live in a life like a lotus uh, tree, a lotus leaf, that if the water falls upon it, then it doesn't impact you. So, and this is what we're learning here that there'll be plenty of issues in the life, there will be, but we have to actually start living life to focusing on our Satchidar and Suru. Because whatever happens, being it good or being it bad, it'll it'll go away. You know, it won't sustain for longer. So um so the perishable things we don't need to worry about. Even the body is gonna die and change. But uh something which is unperishable, which persists for longer, which is a soul, will always persist. So uh so try to understand that be into it and be happy um, rather than, you know, uh, just going to, so depression or, um, you know, uh, crying and all that, moaning about is all signs of uh, ignorance. So not do that, instead be happy. 
uh, I think as they say, don't worry, be happy. That's probably the crux. So any any thoughts around this? I think it was, it was quite a lot to cover in this, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Say something. Well, I mean, you know, you know, was like perfectly explained, properly explained. So nothing more to add in this one. Very good. Uh, so Sunil, Sunil Prabhu, did you want to add something on? Um, no, not Prabhu. Maybe we, we, next time, if we read some more verses, uh, it will become okay, clearer. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Thank you, Shahar. You're still in the swimming pool. Uh -huh. So but this will close for today. Thank you very much. Yep. And I'll upload it to you. Well, All right. Yes, yes, have a nice day, everybody. Yes.